You can sit up here. Okay. What's that? Good evening. It's good to see all of you here. Uh, we're, this evening we're going to, I'm, I'm your, your mayor if you don't know that. Um, and we're here to uh, give you s some information, uh, some new information maybe that you haven't seen before. And uh, mostly to try to answer your questions. So uh, we're just going to start out with uh, some introductions and uh, a little, little bit of an intro if you have something to, to start out with, Gary. Sure. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Gary Tucker. I'm the city administrator, interim city administrator uh, for the city of Haywarden. And I was here for about 10 years, about that many years ago, it seems like. But, um, <clears throat> it's kind of like a boomerang. You come back, and, and then we have a flood, and oh, my goodness. Um, so if you continue to have needs, uh, that are not being addressed, please contact the city offices uh, at 515 or 551-2565. We've uh, brought Brenna Rankin in, and she's the, uh, been appointed as our flood relief coordinator. And so that's her sole role, is to do everything that we can to help uh, in any way that we can. So please contact the city offices. Uh, there, there may be things that we haven't thought of as a city, and uh, please don't hesitate to call and let us know. Um, if you have any questions about anything, uh, please give us a call. We do have a, a, a bilingual person on staff, so uh, we can meet that need, the needs of the Spanish as well. Um, we do have some current sign-up sheets in our office as yet. Uh, for those of you who need help and with what, um, if anyone would like to volunteer, uh, we have a list for that as well. And, and we would like to know uh, the condition of your home, if it's, uh, uh, especially if it's been pretty seriously uh, damaged so that um, <clears throat> we can work more closely on some of those issues. Um, there are still uh, many cleaning supplies and N N95 masks available at the city offices if you need those uh, while you're doing cleanup. <clears throat> there are still food items, personal hygiene products, et cetera, available at the community center. And I believe those will be moving to the library next week, starting next week, if that's correct. And, uh, the city will continue to work with private developers, finding ways to uh, add additional affordable housing, although that's going to take some time. Uh, I want to remind everyone that there are people out there that um, are very good scam artists during times like this and are very willing to take your money and run with you receiving no benefit. So um, please, please make sure that you're dealing with credible, credible contractors, preferably local ones if you can. And uh, <clears throat> if you have any questions about folks that are coming around to your, to your house uh, soliciting work, uh, give us a call at City Hall and we'll try to help you through that, uh, that process. Um, FEMA continues to be the uh, resource responsible for assisting you financially with your damaged property. Uh, if you're a business owner, they'll most likely be uh, directed to the SBA offices. The process is much slower than any of us would like but most important thing is to get the best financial settlement we possibly can in the end. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the city has no control over the FEMA decisions or their financial offers to you, but we'll be more than happy to assist, uh, assist you through the process in any way that we can. Thank you, Gary. Carol? Can, you, can everyone hear okay? Okay. My arm of this uh, big disaster is probably more directed toward business, um, finding available housing, providing available housing. Um, we've been working diligently, as you all know, um, with some local developers to get some housing. We do have options available. Please contact my office. I will put you in touch with those people that are developing those properties, and we'll go ahead and try to get them, get you placed in one. We want to keep you in Haywarden. We're excited about things going on in Haywarden, and it does continue to grow. We will have probably 30 to 40 new homes available and open to the public within the next eight to nine months. I know that sounds like a long time, but things will develop, you know, progress. They won't just be wait eight months and then find out what we have. Um, if you're a business owner in town, please give my office a call. We are offering 0% loans um, for a small amount um, just to kind of help you get through. So give my office a call. 
Travis. I'm Travis Waterman, the Public Works Director for the city. I'll give you a little update on the utilities and parks and, and things in the city. Uh, the wastewater plant is still running at high capacity. That's due to all the groundwater that's infiltrating into the sewer system. Um, everything's um, still running through the, the plant. Uh, there'll be some uh, quite a bit of uh, upgrades that are going to be due over the next four months, um, six months, but we're diligently keep working on those. The water treatment plant is still running well. We're asking that no one waters their lawn for at least another week. Um, we'll update you once we get two more wells back online. And I just wanted to discuss the reason for that is for fire protection. Uh, we don't want to lower the reservoir levels of our reservoir and water tower uh, for unneeded use. Um, in case there is a fire, we want to make sure we have enough water for those emergencies. Um, we appreciate everyone's patience with the water and sewer usage throughout this historic flood event. Um, there's quite a few gas meters that have been shut off uh, if your home was flooded. Um, please let us know when you're ready to turn those back on. There's a process we have to go through, uh, turn it on, and just for safety reasons, there's a, there's a process we need to be there when you do that. Um, electricity is on everywhere in town, um, minus about 75 customers who uh, still need their panels uh, redone, dried out, fixed. Um, please let us know when, when you're ready for that and we'll get your power back on. Um, our debris contractor has been busy hauling away flood damaged items. Um, the county did borrow us their magnetic trailer, so we've been driving around town picking up nails, screws, pieces of metal that are on the street. So we're, we're trying hard there to keep those from getting in anybody's tires. Um, next week will be the last week for uh, curbside pickup. Um, dumpsters will remain available at 808 7th Street until further notice. Um, with that being said, if anyone has extenuating circumstances, they haven't got all their stuff to the curb, whether it's insurance, whatever the reason, please call us. Um, we're still here to help you out. So we will, we will still do that um, curbside. Um, cleanup continues at the pool. Uh, it will not be open till next year. We plan to utilize our lifeguard staff um, for park cleanup, other odd jobs that our normal staff can't get to. Swimming pool passes will be honored next season, and they are still honored at the Orange City Pool for the remainder of the season. Um, that being said, uh, Central Park has been uh, cleaned and sanitized, all the equipment, so the Central Park is, is open right now. The park shelter house and our comfort station on the north side of the, the park by the camper pads were significantly damaged. Um, we're waiting for an inspector uh, make a decision so we can decide um, fixing or replacing those two items. Camper pads have been saved for those uh, affected by the flood. Um, currently, they're full at this time, but if you're in need, um, contact Sioux County Conservation. And also, we were just notified that Hudson, South Dakota, has offered uh, their, our residents, a discounted price for full hookups as well. And if you want to be put on a list for our camper pads in town, just call the office and, and we'll put you on the list in case someone moves out of there, we'll get you in. That's my update. Okay, thank you. Uh, we also have uh, Kim Mails here, who is with the Red Cross. Uh, so if you have any questions for him, uh, he can try to answer some of them. Uh, Going to come up and speak a little bit first. Hello, I'm Kim Mayles. I'm with the American Red Cross. And we've been in this area since the beginning of this disaster is unfolding. We've done our best to provide comfort and support, food supplies, and covered assistance where we can. And we're grateful to the people that we found a warm welcome. Thank you. 
set up shelters immediately in the area to shelter people immediately after the flood damage began to happen. Uh, we have two shelters that are still open with, uh, with a smaller population that's moving in day by day. And since that time, we've also been doing damage assessments in communities and all across this area. The teams of our Red Cross volunteers in Jan uh, have actually set eight uh, homes all up and down the roads and farm roads and in towns to provide a database for us for financial assistance and other recovery assistance as that now is moved into that phase of the operation. We're still nailing down the details on the site, the date, and the hours. It looks like probably two days next week I've been talking with Larry and Gary just a moment ago and it looks like we're probably set up here at this location. And so uh, you likely will receive a text, some of you, from the American Red Cross and know that that's not a, a scam. But we want to get a hold of you because we want to be able to provide you the assistance that we're able and that you are eligible for. Uh, I don't have a lot of other answers for you right this moment, but just know that next week we're going to be in your town and we'd like to meet with you. And so please come by. Uh, we want to meet with you. We want to assist you as we can and as you are eligible. And I'll be hanging around here after the uh, meeting to see if there are any questions or something. I'll answer what I can, but I want you to know we're going to be in your town uh, two days next week. We're nailing down the hours and all of that, but that information will be publicized and many of you will be contacted and we invite you to come. The American Red Cross is a charity. It's not a governmental organization and we provide assistance to those that have experienced disasters regardless of race, religion, ethnicity, we just help people. And so we want to be of assistance to the community and you'll be hearing more from us. Thank you, Kim. And we really appreciate the, the Red Cross. They've done a great job here. Um, had an opportunity to work with a lot of those folks. So uh, appreciate them very much. Um, at this time, we're going to open it up for questions or comments. We are um, recording this meeting, and uh, we'll have it up on uh, the city website probably sometime tomorrow. And um, so if you have a question or a comment, ideally you could come up uh, and speak in the, the microphone so everyone can hear and it will get picked up um, for the recording. Otherwise, if you would stand and speak loudly, that would work too. So, um, who wants to start out with a question or comment? I do have one here in back. Uh, when you were talking about the housing available in about eight to nine months, a lady over here asked what price range are they looking at? And then also my question was, is it It's actually both. Um, we do have a group of developers that are bringing in some prefab homes that would be single family homes. They're hoping the price point would hit somewhere around that $150,000 mark. We are teaming up with the SBA to offer 2.69% interest on those home loans, um, which would make them very affordable. Um, that is, of course, basically on a first come first serve basis. We just started the process this week. Um, things are subject to change, but you're more than welcome to call my office, and um, I will certainly visit with you. There are apartments, townhomes, and homes that are going to be built. Next. <clears throat> oh, okay. <laughs> Good. I 
I would just suggest that you uh, maybe stop in and city offices and we can we can sit down and have a conversation about it we had have had some discussions about um, maybe um, at some point in, in, in some of these homes that aren't aren't uh, salvageable that the city uh, retains ownership through a quick claim deed uh, to the city and then it becomes our responsibility at that point so um, so I, I th I think that's something that we're working on yet, but uh, but I, I do think that will happen. So, but please stop in and we can visit about that at your convenience. So. Have you gotten a, a second visit from FEMA? Okay, for for your house. Yes. Okay, good. Other questions. Everyone hear that? No. Okay. The question was, uh, with the money that's being collected um, through Venmo and, um, and at the banks, how that money is going to be uh, distributed, and is it going to go to uh, the victims of the flood? Gary? <laughs> 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 Me? <laughs> the uh, the council cho the council uh, met last night. We had a council meeting, and uh, and we did bring that before the council. Uh, they're currently looking for four people to serve on uh, a committee to make those decisions as to how that money is going to be distributed. So, um, please contact again. You can contact the city offices. We'll get your name on uh, through the folks uh, that are working on that process, and uh, they will form a, a committee that will make those determinations. That has not been, de been determined as yet, and, uh, and we're, we're hoping to get a very diverse group of folks on that, on that committee so that those decisions are, are sure to go to the people that, where, the, where the needs are. So uh, uh, that's, that's where the process is right now. So, Every victim has a need, but they're all different. They're all different. So once the Hudson Bay Bank home um, is not livable, who is responsible for the donation? Is it the homeowner or the owner? Or who is who is responsible for that? Gary? Larry? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have answers to all these questions yet, but um, based on discussions that we had at the council meeting last night, I think the city is looking at, uh, again, there are many factors involved, so it's hard to have just a blanket answer to some of these questions, but I think the city will be involved in, in uh, demolishing some of those homes uh, through a quick claim deed again and, and, uh, and taking ownership. Um, we're still, still working through the process, and uh, of course that costs money as well, and the city... Uh, um, the last thing we want to do is impact the residents of this community that have been devastated enough already with more taxes or more utility costs or, uh, or, or higher, higher fees of, of any kind. So we have to make sure that we balance all those things. But right now the plan, I think, is for the city to look at uh, quick claim, de quit claim de deeding a lot of those properties and, uh, uh, and tearing them down and... and uh, Taking ownership. Yes, and I just sent a letter to our, our city attorney actually this afternoon, and I haven't got a response back from her with that very specific an, uh, question. Because as you know, taxes are a uh, one year in arrears. So your taxes you're paying in September of this year are for uh, March of 2023. So. Uh, so we're not only um, talking about last year's taxes, but we're talking about this year's taxes and, uh, and who's going to be responsible for those things. So there, uh, I'm still waiting for a question, uh, or an answer back from our city attorney on that specific question. But, um, but that, that is a, uh, so I don't have a, an answer, I guess is what I'm trying to say. 
um, until we get back from her. So. So the question is, um, when we put in the concrete in, in on Central Avenue, that um, homeowners were required to pay and it could be over, spread over years. And um, if the property is quick claimed, would you still have to pay that? Yeah, well, assessment. <clears throat> once a quick claim deed is in place, you no longer own the property. So you, you won't be uh, responsible for, for taxes beyond that point. But again, as we talk, some of those taxes are for the previous year. So we need to have that. We're still waiting for some discussion from the county attorney or city attorney, excuse me, on the, the answer to some of the tax questions. We don't have, I, I don't have the answer for you tonight, to be honest with you. But we have, we have uh, requested the answer from our attorney. So we're waiting for that. So. These are good questions. Um, and I want to let you know that we asked FEMA to be here and they were unable to be here. So um, I will be taking any of the FEMA questions and, um, and passing them on to FEMA. And then I will post the answers that we get from FEMA on the city site <clears throat> and on my Facebook page. Yes. And probably it's probably not safe for people to come in and clean or get anything out of it. Um, Travis, as it's as it's demoed with the stuff in it, they'll have to separate appliances and food goods um, into separate piles when they they will when they tear it down. Yeah, because they can't they can't go in to clean it. When it's unsafe. Yeah. It'll be awful. Could, could I just add something? Uh, those of you that have questions about the, the tax uh, uh, issues, uh, the assessments and the, and the taxable, um, taxable information, if you could give me your name and address before the night's over, before you leave tonight, um, or name and phone number, actually, I will uh, uh, give you a call back after I get an answer back from the attorney so I have an answer for you. So. Yes, Tracy. The um, as far as the colors, the the red tags mean it's unsafe to go in. The foundation is is cracked, or the or the wall is has come in. It's just unsafe for anyone to get in there until you either get a contractor to support that wall or fix the wall, um, and it's it's totally a safety mechanism to keep you out, keep others out, because it's unsafe. If you go in to, to try and get a chair or something out of your house and it were to fall in on you, you know, heaven forbid, we don't want, we made it this far, we don't want any more accidents. Uh, yellow tag means it's questionable. Um, maybe they couldn't get into the basement, they couldn't see where they, they needed to see. Um, so it's just a kind of a question mark. It could could be okay. They just weren't able to to get in there and see everything they needed to to make a, a firm decision. And then green, of course, it's it's safe to go in and and do your work and 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 everything. 
And so red tags don't necessarily mean that it's going to be demolished or condemned. Correct. It's just unsafe to enter until a contractor or someone can get in and, and make that house foundation safe to enter. Uh, Two red tags. <laughs> oh boy. There, there was a first round of tags that we we went out and put on. Um, and that was by the mayor that we could see walls caved in. That was we took it upon ourselves to try and keep everybody safe and keep it keep people away from those homes. Then the inspector, the real inspector, state inspector, came around and then put his tag on there. If you get three red tags, then you win the jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> So if the jacks are under the foundation and there's no wall, can you take one of the red tags down? If a, if a contractor has has came in and okayed that. Well, you really don't have the contractor. It's more of a landlord that did it. Um, then maybe a... Did the city come in and look at it since the city's the one that put it on? Yeah, I think the uh, we'd get the inspector back and and get his decision on that. And then we could remove that. Yes. They he tried to make it to all of them when he was in town. He was only in town for two or three days. Uh, we gave him a list of of the you know the obvious ones, and he's making his way back around to get to those yellows and the and the ones that he didn't make it to. I know he didn't make it up on the north side of town. Correct. Yep. So he'll, he'll hit the yellows and then the ones he hasn't been to first. Do we have any inspectors out there? They are hard to find. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think you you can call the city offices, and they will make a list if there isn't already a list on there that to make sure that the inspector um, uh, sees your house. And that was the issue he was having. He he couldn't get in to the homes if no one was there. He just did, you know, the walk around inspection, um, and then those that he could contact, he went in and and did the the full inspection on the basement wall. Yes. The question is, um, are they going to be, are they going to do two inspections? You're talking about FEMA, right? right. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not aware of that, I guess, but uh, that may be true, but I, I'm not aware of that. I haven't heard that, but uh, no. we just, we do know they're coming back uh, to do additional inspections, but I, I have not heard that they were going to do two inspections. So. Uh, would you repeat that, please? Okay. I don't, yeah, I don't know what that percent, percentage is, but the, um, as I understand it, the first time through is preliminary. Um, to check for safety and such and then uh, you may get a second visit from FEMA and that would probably be your last visit and you would figure out what FEMA is going to do for you that is that your understanding Travis uh, yes okay. Um, the the last previous flood uh, floodplain was in '84, and they just did a new one a couple years ago. So the chances of them doing one probably in 10 years. Um, if you if you look at that, there's there's different colors. There's the red. That's the the one percent chance of a flood. That's they call that the hundred year. And then there's a light 
Brown, I believe that that's called the 500 year flood. Um, and we were well into that on this one. Well, well into that. So we're good for a 500 years uh, from our floods. Uh, they're looking at changing the wording on that from 100, 100 years and 500 years to 1% and a half a percent. Because that's the chances every year that you could have that size of a flood. It's very good advice to make sure you read and understand uh, the letters you get from FEMA. If you need some help with that, uh, I'm sure the, uh, uh, you can bring it to the city offices and, and they would help you with that. But yeah, it's, it's very important that you understand uh, what you're signing. Um, yes. Um, you can stop in the city offices anytime. We have uh, zoning maps, and, and uh, uh, we can meet with you. We meet, meet with you individually because each each, uh, each location is going to be different in the community. So, uh, be glad to sit down with each of you and, and talk about your zoning issues. And, and again, as you do build a new uh, uh, or a, uh, even update your existing facility, if you go beyond the current footprint of your house, then you do need a building permit and. Uh, and uh, and if it isn't a floodplain, you need a floodplain permit to build anyway uh, as well. So um, stop in, and we can talk to you about zoning issues and about uh, uh, about what you would need to do to to uh, rebuild or or to build. Did you have a, an electrical contractor come in? Electrician dried it out and turned it on and got it okay so we could get that on. From the city's perspective, that's uh, that's adequate, I believe, Travis. Is that uh, correct? As long as we have an, a certified electrician, a licensed electrician, come in and, and do the appropriate um, uh, needs that uh, it's each in, in each home and the electrical needs that they have, and, and they've approved it, and then that's the only time we will turn the electricity back on. And and once that's done, we we feel that it's that it's satisfactory, but um, we have to rely on certified electricians to make those determinations. So, yes. Well, it, FEMA actually uh, put the red tags on, but... Um, it, well, uh, one thing we have been looking for is a um, 
building inspector that we would hire because uh, like we said it's really hard to get we had to get a state inspector here on the initial um, in the city I think last night we discussed at the council meeting um, a route to get a building inspector um, either part-time or shared with another community that we would have full-time so we would utilize our own building inspector at that point we wish that the process was a lot faster but um, unfortunately it's been complicated because of the uh, breadth of the flood and how many communities were um, affected by it and there's only a, a finite number of inspectors and um, so it's going to take a little longer I'm afraid other questions yes I think one of the one of the payments there's a there's initial payment for emergency needs then there was a a payment to stay in a hotel for a couple of weeks then there should be a, a rental assistance that's available for at 60 day increments 60, days at 60 time, or 90 right? day increments and then you reassess <clears throat> every 60 days and that I think that can go up to 18 months so Make sure you're checking with FEMA on those options. It, it, yes, yeah, yeah. When you when you signed up initially with FEMA, you, I guess, assume you gave them your needs, and then those should have been options given to you. And if not, call your FEMA representative and and question those because that those three are the things that they. Once you sign up for FEMA, and then you get that uh, acknowledgement letter, and then they say, we've received your application, and then there's, there's probably five or six pages in there. And you know one of them, you have to fill a form out to send in, possibly. But in that letter, it'll say, it offers several things, rental assistance, all those things that he was just talking about. And they're the ones that should help with some displacement or rental assistance, those type of things. Okay, and you signed up for FEMA. Okay. Did, did you get a letter back yet saying we received your application? Wait, you don't, okay, you said you had a landlord? Okay, so yours is more uh, personal belongings? No, I know. So the letter you got back, is there any information in it that says? We never really got a letter. I called FEMA and it's a FEMA hotline. Mm -hmm. And the lady that I talked to, she was like, I told her, you know, you never got the letter in the mail, or I never got an email. I never got an email from them. And so she read to me what yeah. Of personal property, you mean? Because then we could appeal that. Well, I've done that. I, you know, can't be appealing. But as far as a letter or anything in that I have in seen a paper, myself, you yeah. should have gotten a, I would think, a paper letter, even if you are just renting. And it, it will show options unless they, so they like paid you for any personal property, and that was about it. And you, you called FEMA and said you didn't get any acknowledgement by mail? Yeah, when I talked to, okay. when I talked to her on the phone. Did they give you a uh, case number? Yes. Yeah, okay, number. stick with that one. And then there's sometimes there's a FEMA number, it's four digits. I have that. Okay. And when you called her, did you give those to her? She should have been able to answer your questions.
I kind of I agree with you. We can city find out. Mm -hmm. Can the city find out when uh, they're available at the if it's every day from eight to four or whatever? Where FEMA's they set up offices like Rock Valley and of course it's probably Sheldon. Mm -hmm. And that's why they put it there, but I agree with her because I've made numerous phone calls to that 800 number and I got somebody different every time and I didn't even get an answer. So I would suggest you go talk to them. Yes, take your ID number, your FEMA number. Is Yes, I think that'd be a great idea. If, uh, if you would all call the... I thought Sioux Center Mall too. I thought I heard that, but I... It's what? FEMA, oh. FEMA will be in Rock Valley from 8 to 6 p.m. daily until further notice. Okay. At Rock Valley. At the, at the city park? And then the SBA for businesses is in? Sioux Center. Sioux Center Mall. That's right. I knew there was two different things. but. Okay. Oh, okay. I just wanted to help you with your answer. Okay. Hey, thank you. Okay. Yes. This is this might be halfway off topic or whatever, but with all the standing water around and everything and with the increase in mosquitoes, is the city gonna get any more foggy? Sure. They came through once. Yes, and they're they're due to come early next week. And when they do come around, they put briquettes out in the, any standing water to kill more mosquitoes from being born, made. <laughs> Birth control for mosquitoes. <laughs> I can tell you they came through Akron the second time, and the next day they were just mean. This is nasty. So uh, I'm not sure how much help is doing this year. There's so many of them, but it, it, uh, it's got to help, I'm, I'm hoping. But. Uh, just a second, please. Okay, question in front. In regards to the sewer plant and the raw upgrade, one, what upgrades are being done? Two, how will it benefit the community? And three, when was the decision to make the upgrades? And if they're needed now, why wasn't it done four months ago? Um, upgrades are probably a, the wrong word to use because I really meant pumps that need to be replaced. The UV was inundated with water that needs to be replaced. Um, it needs to be reseeded so it can um, eat the organisms and clean the water before it goes out. Um, those are the type of things, flood related, not any upgrades. No, it totally damaged when it got inundated and flooded. All the pumps and electrical equipment, sensors, stuff Probably like that. It was running good beforehand. Probably to the tune of a half million dollars when we're done. So. Brutal. Yeah, I, I used the brutal. wrong wrong word. So uh, it was brutal. Next question.
your displacement they'll pay for a certain amount of hotels or whatever. I don't know how long. But. I think that's the 14 days, and then but then after that, there's rental rental assistance right, but beyond that. Correct. Um, I appreciate everyone bearing with us. Uh, you know, this is the first, you know, major flood for us to a lot of these questions, you know, we had to research and look up and, and find out how to do what we're doing. So this is good. You have good questions. If we don't know the answer, we're looking them up. We'll get back to you. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> we were doing the same thing, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, every, uh, you know, every city above us lost, well, not every city, but a lot of cities lost sewer plants, and they bypassed, and, and things went into the rivers. So you got the Rock River inundated with uh, sewage in their river. You have Canton and uh, some towns above us, same thing. And it just uh, exacerbates the problem by the time it gets to us. We had uh, sewage that made it into the river as well. Um, everything went through the plant, but then it went over the walls and it was just inundated too. So I do not know what the DNR's plans are with. I thought I heard in, in Sioux Falls they weren't expecting a fine from DNR. But... Um, um, I guess you know when you have a disaster like this, it's that's that's what happens. And uh, the advice would be if you're doing any cleanup of any kind that you have protective equipment on because, as you know, it's nasty. So the next time it happens, are they not fine also, or do you expect it to be coming? Well. I can't. I can't answer for the DNR in South Dakota. I, d I don't know. That was just speculation, maybe from someone. But um, and there might not be a fine, but there might be th some things that uh, cities have to do so that it doesn't happen again. That I would expect that. Um, unfortunately, the way most sewers work in every city is it's in the lowest portion of town because it's all gravity-fed sewer down to the plant. And when the river's up so high, even if the plant's working and you're high and dry, there's there's no way to get that water out. There's just too much pressure. Um, there's mitigation that we could, you know, raise around our plant so the water doesn't get in. But the problem we had before water even got into the plant, it was coming up over because it, it didn't have the pressure to get back out. That that will definitely be something we'll be looking into in the near future, very near future. We And we may not have an option with the DNR. They may come in and tell us these are the things that we have to do. So uh, we, uh, we're, we're looking for some guidance there as well at, at some point. Question in back. Yes. Right now we have uh, two 12 plexes, 12 units in each building. There will be two of those. We call it the old Sioux Motel lots. It's actually located on Highway 12 or by our Calliope Village. Um, there will be two apartment complexes built there. Um, the other housing will be built up by Oak Hill. Um, there will be some up there, or I'm sorry, Micah, the nursing home will be built up over there, and then we will have some coming on 16th and L.
The okay. question is, are we planning on um, developing on property that's already, that needs to be demol demolished, yeah. One of the things that happens with these developments, these are private developers. The city of Haywarden itself does not become a, a renter or, you know, a leaser of properties necessarily. Um, so private developers can be as creative as they, as they want to be. They will face the same stringer or strict restrictions that anyone else building there would. You know, they got to meet, you know, they have to have a DNR permit. They got to meet the floodplain requirements. So chances are they probably will not build down there, but I would never say never. Yeah, and, and keep in mind, as it sounds, the city may own some of these lots. So uh, we have to figure out what we're going to do with them because we don't want to mow them for the rest of our lives either. So that's just one more expense and, uh, and, and more, one more additional maintenance cost for the city that, that we don't need, uh, uh, which by we means you guys. You know, you guys are the people that pay for everything the city does. So if we have more maintenance, it's going to be more cost to the folks that live here. So we want to avoid that. So uh, I guess what I'm saying is we, we hope to find some use for those, uh, whether that, you know, and, and so, so the city doesn't have a forever uh, maintenance uh, task. But we don't have answers for that yet. But. Parking lot? Pardon me? A big par parking yeah, lot? But yeah, yeah, that's... Trouble is, they're scattered all over. It's, it's not mm -hmm. like there's one. There's this uh, uh, many of them, and uh, they're beyond uniform. I called Vandenberg uh, to see, you know, if I did rebuild on my lot, and I didn't have Yeah, construction costs are already high, and, and uh, unfortunately, when you have disasters, you become uh, a source of predatory predatory pricing, and you know uh, prices go up again because because they can. And uh, so. Um, so we hope to work closely with some of the local contractors uh, to uh, at least get something affordable. And, and by affordable, who knows what that number is, but uh, different to everyone, of course. But we'll uh, do our best to, to get it uh, to get something reasonable. Yes. You did say that modular homes would be allowed on people's property? Yes, ma'am. If they fit the zoning requirements, of course, you know, like mm -hmm. everything else. But, yeah, they're... They're, they're, they're an acceptable type of house in, a, in an R1 district. So Yeah, on a uh, frost-free footing. Yeah, frost-free footing. On a frost-free footing. So. Or you could put it on a basement. but yeah, And a, a frost-free footing re wouldn't require you to have a basement. Uh, just, uh, just, just, again, a frost-free footing with pillars uh, would be adequate. And, uh, but... Um, we can we can talk individually about those requirements if anybody has any questions. But yes, they are allowable. So, anything else? Yes, Patty. I just want to say it's been heartbreaking to see all your losses. I've been to many, of, talked to many of you, seen your piles, and it's it's just heartbreaking and sad and I think the whole community is affected and when they see it's all those piles and you lose everything and even the city you know it's it, it's just been a sad situation and they want to help a lot and I know I'm on the City Council and we have had those discussions like you know Gary and Larry were saying and Travis and we will continue especially with housing you know, some of us just kind of coming together, and they will get it out to you. But I just, I just feel really bad for you for what you all been going through, and what I've seen. Just want to let you know that. 
Another question, yes. Right, and and he was referencing the, um, you know, baby toys that they're going to be chewing on, stuff like that. Um, we sent. Yeah, so I mean, as long as you're not gnawing on it, I mean, it's. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, you know, for just normal play, it's, it's safe. Well, thank you all for coming and for your questions. And uh, if you think of any other questions, please contact the city offices. And uh, we wish you the best and have a good night.
there. I don't think it's going to be long. Okay. Monday. Let's see you Monday. Here in April. All right. Sounds good. I listen to it on the radio. 